Hello students! In this video we're going to be talking about converting quadratic equations from standard form, which is y equals x squared plus bx plus c, into vertex form, which is y equals a times quantity x minus h squared plus k. We're going to be taking a look at four different cases, and these four different cases are all different situations that you might see on a test or a quiz. In the first case, it is a quadratic equation in standard form, and the a value is 1. So we don't have to change this x squared. We don't have to factor it. We don't have to divide by anything. All we have to do is start getting the uh, trinomial over here to be a perfect square trinomial. So the first thing we should notice is that x squared plus 10x is a good start to getting this into a perfect square trinomial, but this negative 4 isn't going to work for us. We're going to remove the c value. So in order to do that, we'll add that value to both sides. And we get y plus 4 is equal to x squared plus 10x. Now that we've removed our old c value, we need to calculate what the new c value is going to be by taking b over 2 and then squaring it. That's something that is a formula that you learned about in class. So off to the side here, you can see that calculation. We did b over 2 squared. Our b value here is 10, so we're taking 10 divided by 2, which is 5, then squaring it to make 25. So we know we need to add 25 to both sides in order to make this right-hand side a perfect squared trinomial. And you can see the change from here to here. We added 25 to the right-hand side. We also added 25 to the left-hand side. 25 plus 4 is 29. So now we have this, which is called a perfect squared trinomial, and we're going to try to compress it into a squared binomial. Now to briefly state what that means, this is a perfect squared trinomial, which means it is a trinomial that can be turned into the product of two binomials. When you factor this, if you were to factor this using AM factoring or quadratic factoring, you would get an answer that has two of the same binomials. And here you see we factored x squared plus 10x plus 25 into x plus 5 and x plus 5. See that these two binomials are the same, so we're allowed to take those two binomials and write them as x plus 5 squared. That gives us our squared binomial. So again, we're calling this a squared binomial because, well, it's a binomial and it's being squared. Now what we can do is solve this equation for y again by subtracting 29 from both sides, and then we'll get our completed vertex form. You can see that we started with y equals x squared plus 10x minus 4 in standard form, and here we have y equals x plus 5 squared minus 29. This is called vertex form. So we've converted our standard form into our vertex form. Now we're going to take a look at a slightly different example wherein the a value is not equal to 1. In this quadratic equation you can see that the a value is actually negative 1, so it's a little bit more difficult to turn it into vertex form. The first thing I want to do when I'm looking at this equation is I see that it's not in so-called standard form. It doesn't have the largest exponents first. Uh, in other words, the highest degree term isn't first. So I'm going to rewrite it so that the highest degree term is first. That looks like this. We have the negative x squared first now, the negative 2x stays in the middle, and the positive 7 just went to the end. So now you can see that the a value is definitely not 1, it's negative 1. So in order to get rid of a negative 1 as my a value, I'm going to divide everything on both sides by negative 1. All right, now that I've factored out this negative 1 from every single term, and you can see that all of the terms have changed their signs, I am going to divide both sides by that negative 1. If I divide that right-hand side by negative 1, this negative 1 eliminates. y divided by negative 1 simply becomes negative y, so it looks like this. Now the advantage here is that we have x squared with a positive 1a value, so now we can start doing the completing square method to try to turn it into a vertex form. The disadvantage is that our y is negative, and we're going to have to turn it back into positive before we're done with our problem. Um, so we can take a look at this part and start completing the square. We need to take our c value and move it to the other side, so that means we're going to add 7 to both sides. And once we add 7 to the left side and to the right side, we can now determine our new b value. Remember, I'm sorry, our new c value. We're going to take our b value, divide it by 2, and square it. And this part we'll just write off to the side here. We know that b in this case is 2, so 2 divided by 2 squared is just 1. That means we're going to add 1 to both sides of this equation. And the advantage we get here is that now this side is a perfect square trinomial, which we can turn into a squared binomial. 
On the left hand side, it just got a little bit more complicated. We added one to the seven becoming eight, but that's okay because we're later on just going to take care of this by solving for y. And again, what we've done is we've taken this, which is called our perfect square trinomial, and we've turned it into a squared binomial. If you can't see the step from here to here, try to factor x squared plus 2x plus 1 using the AM method or the quadratic factoring method, and then you'll see that it's equal to x plus 1 times x plus 1, or in other words, x plus 1 squared. I'm two steps away from solving this for vertex form. The next thing I'm going to do is start solving for y by subtracting this 8 from both sides. Once I do that, I'm going to have a negative 8 on the right-hand side. All right, the last thing I have to do is get this y by itself, and the only thing that's preventing y from being by itself is this negative sign. It's negative 1y equals x plus 1 squared minus 8. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by the coefficient of y, and it turns out that the coefficient of y here is just negative 1. So dividing both sides by negative 1, here's what I get. You'll notice that in this case, dividing both sides by negative 1 is exactly the same thing as multiplying both sides by negative 1. I turn this x plus 1 squared into negative 1 x plus 1 squared, and I turn negative 8 into positive 8. So this is in completed vertex form. We have the a value of negative 1, the h value of negative 1 also, and the k value of positive 8. Now let's take a look at another situation in which the a value is not equal to 1. All right, for this third example, you can see that the a value is definitely not 1, it's 4. And there's a b value of negative 16, but there's no c value. This actually makes our lives a little bit easier because normally what we have to do is move the c value to the left-hand side. In this case, we don't have to do that. We just have to make sure that this a value becomes 1. So the easiest way that I could think of to do that is to factor using the greatest common factor between 4 and negative 16, which is 4. Now, I know what you might be saying. The greatest common factor of 4x squared and negative 16x is actually 4x. I'm not trying to factor out an x, though, because I still need my quadratic to have this x squared in it. The only time I'm going to get rid of that x squared is when I take the, the perfect squared trinomial and turn it into a squared binomial. So I still need this x squared. What I'm going to do now is get rid of the 4 by dividing both sides by 4. And this is going to become a fraction. It's going to become y over 4. It's okay, though, because we're just going to store it on that side for a little while until we solve for y again. So you can see I've divided this by 4, and on the right-hand side I've divided by 4 also. That 4 eliminates. Now what I need to do is find my new c value. There was no c value to begin with. So I'm going to use my b over 2 squared trick. So you see it took my b value, which is negative 4, divided by 2, and squared it. Negative 2 squared is, of course, 4. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And once I add 4 to both sides, it turns out my right side becomes a perfect square trinomial. Every time we find the c value in this way, we find the perfect square trinomial. Now we can take that PST, as I abbreviate it, and turn it into a squared binomial. Once I've turned the equation into a squared binomial on one side and an expression related to y on the other side, all I need to do is simplify this side to say y equals, get y by itself, and I've solved for y. In other words, I've solved for the vertex form. So now the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 4, and then I'm going to multiply by 4. You can see here that I've taken this positive 4 and moved it to the other side, made it a negative 4. Now I'm going to multiply everything by 4. I'm not going to multiply it inside these parentheses by 4, but I'm going to put the 4 on the outside of the parentheses here, and I'm also going to multiply the constant term, the c term here, by 4. All right, you should see that we solved for y. We multiplied this term by 4, and we got 4 times x minus 2 squared. We multiplied the negative 4 by 4, and we got negative 16. Now we're done. This is in uh, vertex form. Last but not least, we'll take a look at one other uh, quadratic in standard form that we need to turn into vertex form. You can see that this problem is all over the place. The negative 3 is your a value. Uh, it's rearranged so that the x squared is not the first term, and not all of these three numbers have a common factor. As a matter of fact, 3 and 18 have a common factor, but 13 does not. So what we need to do first is move that c value out of there. Then we're going to rearrange the equation so that the x squared is first. And then we're going to try to get that, that 3 out of there, that negative 3 out of there, so we can actually work on the problem. All right, as I said, I subtracted the 13 from both sides first. Now I no longer have a c value on the right-hand side. But now my a value and b value are sort of mixed up. So I'm going to rearrange it so it is in standard form. So now it's in standard form. 
the x squared is first and the x is second, but I still have a coefficient in front of the x squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out that negative 3. As I factor out this negative 3, watch what happens to the 18x. If I factor out a negative number from a positive number, my leftover is actually going to be negative. In other words, negative 3 is going to have to multiply by a negative 6 in order to get positive 18. Here's what I mean. As I said before, I divided everything by a negative 3, and I got x squared minus 6x. If you don't believe me, use the distributive property that negative 3 times negative 6x is going to give you positive 18x. Now I need to get this negative 3 out of there, and of course that means I'm going to divide both sides by 3. This left side is going to get a little uglier. So as I said, that y minus 13 is being divided by negative 3, but that's okay because later on we're just going to solve for this y anyway. On the right hand side we need to figure out the new c value, so we're going to do our b over 2 squared trick, which looks like this. And using b over 2 squared, we know our b value is negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2 is actually negative 3. Square that gives you 9. So we're going to add 9 to both sides. Keep in mind that the 9 isn't going to get into this fraction though, it's going to be plus 9 here. So it's going to look even stranger on the left hand side, but that's okay because we're going to solve it later on. All right. We've added in our new c value to both sides, plus 9, plus 9. Now we know that this side is a perfect square trinomial, so it can turn into a squared binomial. So here you can see the right side has turned from a perfect square trinomial into a squared binomial. Now what we're going to do is solve the left-hand side for y. It looks like there's a lot of things going on here, but really there's only three things we have to do. We have to subtract 9 from both sides, multiply both sides by negative 3, and then add 13. We're going to do the onion method, basically. First, let's subtract 9. And you can see here that what we did was we moved the positive 9 to the other side and made it a negative 9, and we haven't touched anything inside the fraction yet. Now we're going to multiply both sides by negative 3, so there's going to be a negative 3 that's placed on the outside of these parentheses here, and we're also going to multiply negative 9 times negative 3. That's going to give us positive 27. And you can see that step as it happens, that negative 3 got multiplied by both sides. It went here and also here. Negative 9 times 3 gave us positive 27. Now all we need to do is add 13 to both sides to get y by itself, and we have our vertex form. And you can see that the only place we were able to add 13 to is that positive 27. And again, 27 and 13 is 40. So we've gotten this to vertex form. All right, this video has been about how to change quadratic equations from standard form to vertex form. We looked at a couple of different types of quadratic equations. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Good luck studying.